Um, so as I as uh, Bryn said, um, I'm a local builder uh, based in Sussex. Have my own eco building business. Um, we construct uh, oak frames, uh, straw bale structures mainly, um, and also load bearing. So there's two sides of the coin that we kind of uh, work mainly with. Alongside that, I also teach. Um, Carpentry at Sussex Downs College in uh, Eastbourne and also the uh, straw bale building course here in Brighton. Um, so, uh, need I say more really? Um, just looking at straw bales and the, the stigma attached, attached to straw bale buildings, um, it's something I come up against every single day. So it's something I work hard to kind of disprove and uh, establish a precedent for um, how amazing they are, really. I'm quite passionate about them, actually. So it's uh, quite good. Okay. So what are straw bale buildings? In the most simplest form, it's uh, a bit of timber, which we do need in most of our construction, which is why I'm also a carpenter. A bit of straw, or even hemp, if you dare. And um, some render as well, some lime render. Um, I was doing a presentation for a while, and um, I was having a question time at the end, and someone put their hand up and said, so why do you use fruit within your construction? <laughs> I said, no, 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 it's lime render. So um, the properties of lime render works very well with straw. So it's, um, obviously it's breathability and everything else as well. Um, the way it curates, it allows movement, and straw bales are all about the movement. Uh, you look at the most, um, you look at a, a method of building going to be able to adapt and move and creak and isn't a rigid structure which is often what we construct nowadays most of our structures are very rigid and the materials in them won't stand movement with inside of them so it's uh, it's looking about something a bit more organic something a bit more fluffy or a bit beardy weirdy as people would say uh, and obviously some fixings, so we do need some metal fixings and various things like that which is why i do um like oak frame uh, construction, although I may look at uh, sweet, is it sweet chestnut construction? May have to start looking at that now, um, because you can avoid some fixing methods. You can use traditional joints. So straw itself, uh, it's a cellulose structure, um, very similar to wood. So it's uh, inert. It's useful to uh, to construct with. Ooh, that moves, um, and it's a uh, it's a lovely material. It's very forgiving. It's very organic. It's very natural, and um, a little bit what. Um, uh, Duncan was touching on there about our structures being very important and I'm spending so much time in them. It is a very natural material and it feels very womb-like uh, when you when you go into a straw bale structure. It's very, I don't know, there's just something very comforting about it. So it's a nice place to be uh, in the world, definitely. Uh, you can see the, the structure of straw here. Uh, this has got a, a mesh over the top of it. I don't favour using meshes in my construction, but American teams do. Um, uh, mainly for a plaster pickup, but what better pickup do you need really than um, lovely bits of straws poking out? But you can really see the insulation, uh, how good it is at insulating there by its structure. So why build with straw? Um, this is a point normally where in my slide I'll, slides I'll go through all the different reasons with construction of straw bales. Hopefully the fact that you guys are here should actually know a lot of those reasons. So it's sustainability, able to buy from local sources, it's renewable and everything else along those lines. But there's two main reasons that I build with straw. Um, firstly, as a building technology or method, I believe it's adaptable enough to be used in any form of construction. So there's no building out there, well, maybe one or two, but there should be no buildings out there that doesn't have a place for straw bales to be in there. Um, the adaptability of it as well and the forgiving nature of straw as well means that it can be worked into any kind of construction method. So anything from a small um, community building, maybe in Stemmer Park, um, all the way through to a multi-storey structure, or um, uh, I don't know, um, thinking of something off the top of my head, but a large um, warehouse, large warehouse or, or uh, multi-storey construction of, of flats. Straw bales have their place within that um, structure. There are some issues in terms of working them in with modern um, materials such as metals and plastics, but there are old traditional methods which actually uh, tend to we tend to find the solutions in. Uh, so obviously I should ask yourself that. So. Um, so straw bales, as I said, adaptability and its ability to be used in modern um, modern designs. These are two very different designs here. Uh, one is a mod cell construction uh, in the Knoll West Media Centre. Sorry, my logo is going all over the top of that. That was a formatting error. Um, 
It's a very modern looking building, um, again constructed by a little bit how uh, Duncan tapped into in terms of the glue lamb or laminated structure with the straw bales inside. And then on the left hand side, sorry, right hand side for you, uh, is an Amazon Nails project when they existed and it was the first uh, council social housing project. So two, two, uh, two up, two down um, straw bale structures. This is where I see straw bale moving. This is where I see, and what I want is I want a straw bale on every street corner. Um, I want to see straw bale construction uh, used for social housing. Um, we have a serious housing issue in this country. We have a serious issue of people not being able to afford to get onto the, to the housing market. And I think straw bale is cheap enough, easy enough to build with, and should be the ideal material to use to solve this problem. Um, hence my, low, my kind of uh, catchphrase of a straw bale on every corner, which is what I want. Um, so there's some different methods. It is a massive uh, spectrum of methods and ways you can integrate straw bales within a uh, structure. Um, starting at the most basic is Nebraskan. Um, so this is where its roots really lie. Um, infill as a timber frame, which can be a hardwood or softwood frame, so a modern construction frame or a traditional frame. Uh, modular panels, as in the mod cell construction, and box beams, which is kind of a hybrid between the two. Within this, there is a significant amount of variations, uh, adaptability and uh, unusualness where basically there's no rules at the moment it's still a very juvenile construction method so you every time we do a building we're adapting and changing and seeing what works better and that's one of the most exciting things about it is that you look at how a bricky uses bricks it's established over thousands of years yes but it gets to a point and he can't do any more whereas with straw bales we're just pushing it and pushing it and pushing it as far as we can so it's very exciting for us So, as the, uh, as the name suggests, uh, its origins lie in uh, Nebraska and America, where the first settlers went out into the, the, the flats and the lands out there, and there was a Homestead Act which was issued, which basically stated that if you could build yourself a dwelling or a structure, then you could claim a section of land. Um, wouldn't that be nice in the UK? You just build your own house, you can just claim that land. Um, it was a way to kind of encourage people going out to the frontier and um, developing communities and developing farms. Um, what happened was is people were going out there and they were building with sod, which is a sod to build with. Um, and that's basically just the top layer of earth and it's just stacked on top of each other and rolled out. It would be very damp, uh, very horrible place to live, but it was a structure nonetheless. It was a bit more complicated than that, but uh, inessential. So what the first settlers decided is there was no timber around, there was nothing to make proper structures out of, so these uh, kind of daring few started making um, straw bale structures. They didn't have render at the time either, so they just left it open to the elements. So you had goats come along and just have a munch and you know animals and birds settle within the structure, but they lasted. Um, then slowly but surely they started rendering them, they used clay renders and lime renders, all local materials they had. And they realised that they're, they're actually pretty good buildings. Um, some of the buildings still exist today. Um, and that was around 19, 1901, something like that, uh, maybe just before as well. So they've been there over 100 years. So a straw bale building can stand the test of time. Um, as Ray Mir said, uh, a building needs a person as much as a person needs a building. So you need to look after a structure and it will last as long as you like it to. Um, straw itself, as worked into construction methods goes back centuries anyway if you look at in this country particularly cob and how cob was used around the world uh, around uh, the country straw was always an important part of that as a fibrous material so it's it's not new to the building world really um the construction is very simple which is why i do it because obviously i'm a carpenter i'm not not that clever i'm not an architect or anything it's basically lego bricks so you stack the lego sorry stack the lego bricks on top of each other um in a running bond as you can see down the bottom corner, uh, very simple construction. Uh, this is ideal for a self-builder or anybody else that's looking to build a structure very quickly and very cheaply. Um, so it's, it's very accessible. It's also very accessible for anybody that wants to do it. So on our builds, um, some of the community builds we've had, the age has ranged from, say, five years old to 75 years old. Uh, and anybody and everybody can get involved. Um, and that's the, the, the beauty and joy of straw bale construction is that it's so 
it's it's a very traditional method. It's uh, if you look in Ireland, if you wanted a house built, often it'd be a case that you'd phone around all your friends and family. Everyone would come round for it. You'd feed them for a while, and you'd build a structure together. And that's where I, you know, obviously that's a bit um, um, not probably going to happen nowadays because of planning, uh, planning and, and building control. But that's a nice thought. That's the way that it should be. It should be uh, an engaging in the community. Whenever you build a structure, you should engage that community as much as possible. Um, so it's very simple, very straightforward. This happens to be uh, one local to us. Um, this is the straw bell down at Stemmer Park. Uh, it's built within an existing frame. Um, so because of the planning constraints and constraints within the building, we've actually built a structure within inside of an existing structure. So it's a load bearing structure that's supporting its own weight, um, but it's inside. And as you can see, the running bond on there, it's very straightforward. There is a bit more uh, complexities to it, but essentially it's straw bales stacked on top of each other um, with the option of a stake run through the middle. Uh, that could be um, any kind of coppice timber that you want to use. You could even use uh, waste timber from other sites. So it's very adaptable in that sense. And then a plate constructed of timber or other materials across the top. And that could be a, a rounded timber or it could just be whatever you've got lying around in terms of waste materials or ordered in materials. Um, we try to favour using local merchants and uh, local timber yards. So um, over by me there's one called Cotford's and they only use local English uh, material and it's all milled up and it's a very family run business um, so for us we like to specify that our materials don't travel more than 45 miles to get to us uh, and that's what we stick to generally generally um, <clears throat> so this this is the construction above it you can see the barn um, that was existing as well the other method uh, that we often use is infill now this is an oak frame in Uckfield uh, that uh, we work with uh, closely with an oak framers that construct it for us. Um, within that oak frame, um, it could be a standard oak frame and could be finished to any which way you want to be, and the straw bales can just wrap around it. The way they wrap around it can be completely up to you and dependent on how you want to use the space and also what you want the aesthetics to be. So these are uh, two exam uh, four examples, sorry, uh, just in terms of uh, section through and plans as well of where your posts could be seated in terms of your straw bale. The, the basics of this is that you can have your, your wall completely dependent from your load bearing structure, which means that you can have nice verandas or you can have uh, it all embedded inside so it's in completely invisible, in which case you just get a nice kind of earthy Yoda's cave straw bale wall if you so wish to. So it's a, it's a very adaptable material. It, it just lends itself to being used and abused in any which way you want it to be to used within the structure. Uh, these are two examples. That's the, uh, that's the upfield build on the right, and on the left you'll obviously hopefully identify that one as the Ben Law House. Um, so very similar in design, uh, one using round wood, one using uh, modern uh, square wood or locally um, machined up square wood anyway. Uh, this is some uh, just details inside of the structures. So this is a nice Gothic uh, curve going through, which is for a Gothic window that's to be placed later. Uh, that's actually my dad there. He's uh, 75. He insists on coming on every build that we do. He's the 75-year-old I was talking about. Um, he's retired, but he insists on being every build that I do as just generally just there to make tea and make sure everybody's happy. So um, you can also see in the top right-hand corner some of the detailing of how the oak frame sits in front of the straw bales. So this build particularly, which I'll show the next slide as well, which will give you a bit more information, um, the oak frame sits inside and on the outside is a softwood frame, so a local large softwood frame, um, which meant that it could be clad very easily. But one of the beauties of straw bale building is that it has a very soft appearance, very traditional cottage appearance. Um, so if you do render it with lime render, it, it does look very good, it's very attractive. However, if you do want to achieve a glass finish on your plaster, it is also possible as well. So, Another method here is the modular panels. Uh, Duncan spoke about this a little bit. Um, obviously, ModCell in Bristol obviously pushed this the most, and obviously this is their, this is their building method. This is what they're famous for. Uh, however, you should not feel that this is somewhat, something not open to you, because the method itself 
is a good method. Um, and I've seen teams across the country replicate it um, using their own materials and using their own methods. Um, so essentially you build a, a, a laminated timber frame, a square box if you will, um, full height so that you can add in full height windows, you can pop, break it up as much as you want to. So within that one box you can play it as much as you want. And that's why some of the teams have actually replicated it across the UK is because when you go to speak to Modcell they basically give you a brochure of panels and you choose which panel you want where. So it's very constrained and it's very expensive. Uh, it's a very good product, uh, but it is also very constrained as, as to what you can. Um, Modso aren't talking later, are they? No, that's okay, fine. Um, you're very restrained as to what, what you can actually achieve. So sometimes clients will go to you and say, I want this particular detail, and it won't be able to be achieved within that. Um, so other teams across the UK are replicating it. Construct the panels. Uh, you can see the laminated timber fra uh, middle mini frames, as it were. They use a rolling factory, so basically they go to a local farmer, find a, um, a large barn to work in, and they actually set up the workshop there. Hopefully a farmer that has straw bales as well, so they uh, kill two birds one stone. Um, stack the straw bales in, compress them, normally with a forklift truck coming in, pushing the straw bales down and squeezing the last course in. We use the same method within uh, infill as well. We squeeze the last course, course in by squeezing the rest down. Most straw bales will compress anyway. They will have a compression rate which can be tested and, and checked um, and is dependent to every single straw bale. Um, or batch of straw bales, I should say. There you can see the panels after they're, uh, it's just a touch coat over those, ready to be installed, and then they're uh, rendered. And this is the bale house of Bath, which is a nice example. Obviously, I could have used a couple of other examples, which someone has already used. <coughs> But it's a nice looking uh, construction. The, the kind of origins of the laminated um, structures come from box beam construction, which is our last method um, of construction. This is um, the Torvine Eco Centre in South Wales. It's a lovely little project. If, you, if you're ever in the neighbourhood, you should definitely look it up. Um, it, was, um, it was white designs who are attached to... Um, mod cell it was their first construction and this actually is very similar to the, the laminated structures except that it's it's actually open ply boxes or open ply sides with the straw bales stacked inside it's also interesting because across the top of the swept top of the roof that's actually got straw bales in as well and that's not a common feature to have in a straw bale construction um, they did find problems with that because the straw started to settle and split so it it needs a bit more work, but there are a couple of people pushing the boundaries in, as in terms of curved roofs of that. Um, this is the basic design. You use ply to achieve um, boxes, essentially, and the straw bales infill between. You'll notice that on all of the builds, uh, there is a, a, a kick-up or tow board along the bottom, normally out of timber. That's to raise the bales off the deck, just in case of ever moisture or any other um, liquids getting inside of the structure and protect them, really. And normally, some something that's the insulator that goes in there would be um, able to cope with, with any kind of moisture, so maybe uh, a sheep's wool, for example. Uh, again, just some more images of the box beam. And that's it. So I don't know how long it was. Thank you very much. Any questions? <laughs> Not too short. Uh, so uh, we've got five minutes for questions. If anyone's got any questions relating to that. Yep. Yeah, I mentioned the uh, insulation. Yep. If I understood why you use ship wool. Uh, there's many different materials you, you could you, use. Yep. Sorry, can you repeat um, so, the question and the answer? So, yep. so with the, the kickboard, um, the materials you could use for insulating in there is there's so many. For example, the expanded clay or sorry, expanded clay or something along those lines. Um, the sheep's wool insulation that we use is purely because I like sheep's wool quite a lot. Um, and it's also very good at managing moisture content because of the way it's, well, the way it's grown, I should say. Um, so sheep, when they're on the side of the mountain, when it's wet and horrible and cold, they're, sorry, wet and horrible and cold, they're still going to keep warm and toasty. So it actually manages that moisture and wicks it away very successfully, which is why we tend to use it in floors and various other interesting nooks and crannies where we know moisture might be an issue. Okay. 
Uh, the lady in, in the grey? Uh, yeah, you talked about sort of upkeep and maintaining the house. How often would you do that to change? Um, so in terms of upkeep and maintaining properties, um, it's the same as what you would do on a normal building. Um, the advantage, though, is if you want, decide you want to change your structure significantly and place a door, say, in that wall, you could just go get the chainsaw and then just cut yourself a new one. Um, and it's pretty much sticking a lintel and that, that's pretty much it. Um, in terms of the upkeep, um, most structures internally are lime plastered or clay plastered. So you may have a lime wash or a clay pa based paint, for example, and it's just maintaining those as you would a standard structure. There's no real significant um, issues when it comes to straw bale construction in terms of maintaining them. Um, they're very, they, they manage their moisture very well on their own um, because it's an open structure, breathable throughout with the timber. Um, it works very well. Um, so, a uh, gentleman in the white. Um, I was going to ask about the uh, soundproofing of uh, straw bale houses, how, how effective they are. And uh, secondly, if you have the sort of oak frame on the table, yep. do you ever get uh, challenges with the movement of the wood? Um, so the second question, which is um, whether oak frames, uh, when they're moving and they're, and they're also shrinking, um, whether the straw bales have any issues with that, no, they manage very well. And one of the advantages of using lime, obviously, is that it moves with the structure as well. So once that straw bales have been plastered internally and rendered on externally or clad, the timber all moves and it all moves together. Um, so a very good example of this is we were constructing an oak frame house. Um, we had done the first lift or the first course up to the first floor of straw bales. And we were up in the top corner of the oak frame house, sawing away. And as I'm sawing, the whole house is just gently moving. The downstairs course is absolutely fine. It's sitting there happy. And if you ever walked across the top of a plate of a straw bale load bearing structure, it's a little bit like surfing because it's very immovable. The straw bales are very forgiving uh, and the, 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 the wide nature of them means that you can achieve that kind of flexibility. Uh, the first question, sorry, was the soundproofing. soundproofing. Yes, it's very good at soundproofing. So um, a lot of the properties that we look at are people that are, live by noisy roads that have managed to purchase land cheaply because um, it's right by a major, a major road. So when you walk into a straw bale structure, it, it is very calm. It's very quiet. And it's fantastic insulation uh, values in terms of acoustic insulation. So, uh, I've got the figures on, on me, but it's, uh, it's all uh, online stuff. We've got a lot of questions, so I'm going to ask for all the questions at once and see if okay. Ian can wrap them into the answers. Okay. So, um, you were talking about social housing and how you could use sort of plans. What, what sort of costing would you think that would be for Okay, hold on to okay. that one. So that's costing for social housing. Yep. Okay. Personal history. Personal history, yep. I was going to ask you about, you said it was adaptable for every kind of structure. What about every kind of climate? Are there any climates that it's not well suited for? Okay, so climates. climates. You remember these? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> my question is actually related to that. Yep. Because, uh, I hoped it would be. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's about, you know, the ceilings of uh, straw bale or similar materials to uh, natural disasters. Okay. A, yep. Natural disasters. Climate, natural disasters. Okay. And one last question. Okay. So. Yeah, I just oh. had a question. On, oh. Uh, you've heard the plywood. Yes. What adhesive is used in the plywood? Okay, a very specific one. Um, okay, very specific one. Um, we try to spec um, plywood with the best ecological properties that it has. Um, sometimes you just take the hit or you use waste plywood um, from other jobs or from other sites. There are some good online sites where you can actually log on and purchase second materials from other sites um, and come and collect waste and various other places. So it's just um, the glues generally are your standard plywood glues. If we're pushed and if I'm honest, if we're pushed and time is an issue and locating eco ply um, which I'm sure Duncan might have something to say on this. Um, if I'm pushed, then I'll, I'll use standard ply if I have to. So, and that would probably be, it may be a formaldehyde glue, possibly. So I try to avoid it at all costs. Um, so the first question was the social housing. So how much would it cost for social housing? We're looking at, 
I mean, we're doing a lot of development work on this at the moment, and it's something that's been running it with me for a long time, and I'm having lots of conversations with people. But I realistically looking to produce maybe a two or small three bedroom house for 150,000 pounds in terms of buying that property. So very accessible from the current market. Between 150 to 200,000, um, I think in this area is an acceptable price to pay for a property, not 450. 600,000, uh, which is what we have here in Brighton. So, um, climates and how they manage other climates. Um, I've built straw bales across the, the world um, from New Zealand, Spain, UK, uh, various other places. Um, I've not come across a climate so far that it hasn't worked in. Uh, that's not to say that there are climates out there that it won't. Um, very damp climates, very humid climates may be an issue, but that's all down to the specification of your plasters and renders because they can manage that internal space through a process of wicking that moisture away. So um, in terms of natural disasters, um, when there was some large earthquakes in New Zealand, all of the straw bale structures generally survived very well. So it has got a good track uh, record for earthquakes. Um, so in earthquake zones, again, with the flexible nature of the building, it just wiggles it off. It is, um, it's very, very good at that. Is there anything else? Oh, personal history. Personal history, yeah. I mean, I suppose, before you, before you talk about your life history, I'm not sure if we've got long enough for that, but okay. I mean, detailing uh, straw bales, it's, detail, it's important to detail the, 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 the base, isn't it, for yes. damp and give it big eaves. That's yeah, oh, rule, yes. Um, so, rule yeah, thumb, it's, the rule of thumb is a stout pair of wellies and a good hat. So, basically, you have good footings, which take it about 300 to 450 mil off, off the uh, ground level, and then you have a good overhang, again, around 300 to 450 mil. Um, that just protects the structure because it's a natural structure, and all natural buildings, cob or anything else, will require the similar kind of um, detailing, generally. Um, Your passion in 30 seconds. Okay. Um, <laughs> I hope it lasts longer, really. <laughs> university degree in art and philosophy. Um, trained as a carpenter, uh, worked in eco-build stuff, and um, uh, generally just volunteered for about five, six years. Uh, eventually got a job working in a sustainable building centre, teaching children about how to build uh, eco-friendly and how to be more environmentally friendly. And eventually I established my own business down here um, after retraining as a carpenter, because I was, I was paying a carpenter more than I was paying me on site. So, uh, so that's it, basically, in a nutshell. Thank Good. you, Ian. Okay, thank you very much.